And in those cases, many filmmakers just don't understand that that's what they're getting into. They think, I got a distributor. My life is saved. My film is going to do, make a lot of money, and they're going to market it. This is a hard topic for us to bring up, but I'm, I'm hoping maybe you can clear up some misconceptions. We often hear that filmmakers aren't making money from distribution deals, but at the same time, we hear that you can make great money working in distribution. Can you, can you help us understand here? Well, yes. Um, so in my opinion, most people aren't making money from distribution because most films just don't work because the public didn't decide to click on your movie. They didn't buy a ticket. Um, there's just a lot more, um, there's just a lot more content being created by the streamers and by studios that, and, and we've got other ways of entertaining ourselves in movies these days, games and TikTok and whatever, that it's, there's just not a lot of, as much demand as, there's not a lot of demand compared to the supply at the end of the day. And so I find that, um, and distributors are in the job of taking a certain, out a certain number of films a year. They know that some are gonna work. They know by experience not all of them are gonna work. And they're gonna do about the same thing on every film, maybe treating one a little better, a little bit more PA, uh, you know, more advertising dollars behind it in order to make it work. And, and they're gonna, so they're gonna take each one out. And if one doesn't work, it's gonna then go through the motions of trying to get a TV, you know, if it didn't work in theatrical and or transactional VOD like iTunes and Amazon where people can rent and buy it, if it didn't work there, they're still gonna to try to sell it to HBO or Hulu if they can. If it doesn't work there, then they're gonna put it on advertising video demand channels like Tubi or Pluto that pay small royalties per view, right? And that's what most, that's the windowing that most distributors do. And there's not a lot to that, right? It's just placement. It's salesmanship and placement. And they're not gonna spit, like if a film didn't work in the very beginning, they're not gonna keep spending advertising dollars. They're not gonna keep, there's not much for them to do. And I think filmmakers feel like, you know, hey, you're not doing anything for my movie. Well, but should they be doing anything for your movie? If they did more for your movie, they would probably lose more money. If the film didn't work on the outset, if it didn't connect in the first three months of its life, it's it's not gonna make money. And that's and, it, and it's gonna stay with that distributor and they're gonna put it through the platforms properly. But if they were to spend more time and effort trying to monetize it, they would lose. And you wouldn't make any more money is the reality. Um, in addition, I think in general, distributors are pretty bad at communicating that to filmmakers. I constantly am having to preach that on their behalf to my clients and other people in the business because um, I've gone on to, um, there's platforms out there where people vent about distribution, right? And you know, I see who they're, who they're venting about. And I know the, I know, I, you know and some, yes, there are, some, there, there are some scumbags out there that no one should ever go near. But there are some people they're venting about on there that I know are running honest businesses and doing it properly, but they're just not going to be your best friend forever, right? They're not gonna be the best friend of the film forever. They're just gonna do their job. If it works, great. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I also find some, some filmmakers just don't understand their contracts when they get into them. Um, you know, there are some distributors of a certain level that are saying, okay, we're gonna put the film out theatrically, we're gonna spend this amount of money and here's a big check. And that's, a gr that's great, and you know, forget about that for a second, but most deals are with distributors that are not putting up any money and just gonna take it out on the various digital platforms and try to sell off Netflix and Hulu later, et cetera. Um, and in those cases, many filmmakers just don't understand that that's what they're getting into. They think, I got a distributor. My life is saved. My film is gonna make a lot of money and they're gonna market it without even talking to them about marketing. And sometimes these contracts even literally say, we're not hiring a publicist. We're not marketing the film. We have the option to, but we're not pledging to. And so if you go in thinking your server's gonna do one thing and they don't do it, then there's then you're getting on you know some platform and saying, oh, I hate so-and-so. 
you know? Um, and so that's what I, I, I see a lot of that. That's not to diminish the people that do get screwed over. There are, there are companies, there are bad actors out there, but there are um, a lot of distributors that just, I think, A, are doing the job properly, if, if, even if they are falling a little short on the communication of why the films are not working to their clients. So it's kind of a, a, a barring someone being dishonest. If, if a company is honest, but but then you have a filmmaker A over here who feels like I'm not being given attention and my movie's just being shoved to the back, it sounds like there's just, the communication is just really broken. And one is a business person, the other is kind of an artist that's very possessive over their, mm-hmm. their work yeah. and they're not meeting in the middle. Yeah, I think that's right. And I think, and that's not to say I wish that distributors could be a little bit more communicative and a little bit more in, kind of in general, even the ones I like um, could be a little bit more um, um, responsive to phone calls and emails from clients. But um, I think to a certain degree, a lot of these companies are taking on a lot of films and they've got to kind of move on to the things that work. And not all filmmakers are are personable, nice people either, right? You get some filmmakers that have screws loose or are have Napoleonic complexes or whatever they have, and um, and 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 are coming after them with phone call after phone call day after day. And as a distributor, you're like, do I have to deal with that? Or I don't. I don't have a contractual obligation to call back a jerk, right? I'm going to move on and start working. I'm going to work just like I do. I work with any other film. Whether he's a jerk or not, I'm going to do the same thing, right? I'm just going to stop talking to him because he's, he's just wasting my time, right? Now, most filmmakers aren't like that, but there are that does happen. And I think that because that happens, that also makes distributors, you know, a little bit more reticent to be personable and 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 communicate with their filmmakers in case it turns into that kind of like, like, why am I in this conversation with this person who I, I put their film out, it's not making me any more money to talk to them about what's happening. Yes, they're my client, but um, what, you know, what is there to do at this point? And the reality too is, what's hard about this too is that some of these contracts are seven, 10 years long, right? And so filmmakers quite often feel stuck. They're like, they're not doing anything with my movie and I can't get it back. Well, the problem there is, what do you do when you get it back? You're not going. No other distributor is going to take it after it's been distributed by somebody else. You're not going to be able to get Netflix or Hulu or so so and so to look at it. Most likely, they've already shown it to them, and they've passed. Um, if you get it back, if if they do agree, if they do agree to give it back to you, you're going to have to get it extracted from all these digital platforms that it's on. They can't just turn the hose over to you. And have the financials just start going. You have to pull it off, and then you're gonna have a hard time getting it back on, because some of those some of those platforms are like, we've had this film before, X, like like you know we don't want old films, um, and so it's you know and so it, it, people end up putting it on Amazon Prime or you know kind of direct themselves, and it just sits there, and doesn't make any money anyway. So most filmmakers should be if they can, moving on to the next thing at that point. What's my next project? How can I take whatever happened here, make some good out of it, and hype it towards getting my next thing done? Because once you've, got, once you've made that distribution deal, whether you're in a good situation or a bad situation, you're, that's it. That's your, your film is, is that's the, gonna be the story of your film, one way or the other. Um, you know, it's kind of an illusion that you can get it back at some point. And, and make something out of it. And that's why, in addition to knowing who the buyers are and being able to read and understand contracts, it's, that's kind of where I come in. I know who communicates well. I know who does the job properly and what that job actually is as opposed to what it isn't and can explain that to the filmmakers so they know what they're getting into when we make the deal. So we don't get those calls two years later saying, you know, why aren't they marketing my film? Because they knew well going in, because I explained it to them exactly what kind of situation they got. Well, you use the word illusion, which I thought's fitting because maybe they did read the contract, maybe you explained it to them properly, but there's an illusion, mine's gonna be different. I realize yeah. it's gonna be yeah. locked up for this, but this is different. Yeah. And that's nothing against 
the filmmaker. It's just we all think our thing is different. Hundred percent. I've I've produced movies as well with other, not not myself alone, but with other people, and um, and I've I've gotten the spell. I've been in the bubble of like we made the greatest thing ever. You know, this is going to go to whoever, and. Um, so I understand, I do understand that, and I do ha- and I do have clients that, despite I uh, explain it to them, do come back to me later and say like, "Why aren't they doing this?" And like, well, if you remember, this is what we talked about. You know, it's not quite like that for this film. Should a filmmaker kind of take the worst case scenario? I know some people don't like to operate like that, but it can help if you kind of take the worst case scenario stance. You know, you're looking at the contract and thinking, well. I know it says I'll be locked up in this territory or whatever for seven years, but I'm sure it'll be fine. And maybe just have something in their mind. Do I really want that? Is this really for me? Um, I think that, y- yes. I think that, I think you can make an educated guess on what the worst case will be based on the habits of the company you're in bed with to a certain degree. So, because, you know, most distribution agreements don't have anything in them that says they have to put out the movie either, right? Sometimes we can build in clauses where it says, if you don't get, release it in nine months, we'll get the movie back. But that's pretty easy to fulfill. They can throw it on Amazon and it's released per se, right? So it's hard to get a distrib- like a narrow, get a distributed guarantee what will happen. I'm saying that because if you are, if you do get a deal with a distributor and you look back on the last couple of years and you see, oh, they've released all these films and these, this is how they've released them. There's a little more security that the worst case scenario is that they're gonna release it like that, right? They said they're gonna put it on all these platforms. They did it for all these other films. So that's most likely the worst case scenario. And the worst case scenario is that they do that and no one bothers to buy the movie. You know, that can happen for, you know, lots of films. Um, you know, it doesn't happen at a certain level if you're getting big theatrical deals, but we're talking about straight to digital, you know, distribution. That's very much a, but I, it's, it's funny because I've had so many films now go to these distributors that handle all rights and they give them the same treatment and some make a couple hundred thousand dollars and some make two thousand dollars and you really can't see any difference between the two except that perhaps the artwork just clicked with the public better the trailer clicked someone said something about it kind of organically online and that took off and created a swirl it's really hard like there's a lot of things you can tell a filmmaker to try to do to support a film publicity get in social media company um, doing a theatrical there's nothing that guarantees that any of that will help or work um, I almost always do kind of, if someone just have, has a, a, a digital distribution deal, say try to do something to help support it because at least you feel like you did something. Um, but there's no real empirical evidence that like having a publicist for a film makes a dollar more um, or that running $5,000 in social media ads makes $10 more. Um, at least from what I see in terms of looking at films, I've seen many films get no treatment, make lots of money, and some don't. 